Hey guys, this is Ben Lim with Ben Lim TV, Revival Connects, where we are making revival a reality all across the earth. It is such an honor, pleasure to have Benny Johnson here on our show. And of course, Benny Johnson. Who doesn't know Benny Johnson? Grandma with <laughs> muscles. And a, such an inspiration. Uh, I mean, I'm sure she has so much she can share with us, and I'm just so eager to hear. But uh, uh, of course, Bill Johnson is her amazing husband, Bethel Church, and the whole movement. It's such an honor to have you here, uh, Miss Benny Johnson. Thank so you. Thank you so much. It's good to be with you. Yes. Uh, here we are in this beautiful outdoors I know. <laughs> uh, in Canada. Yeah. And uh, uh, what, are you, what are you receiving here as we're here on this Into the Deep Retreat Mentorship? Well, I really have enjoyed um, hearing the speakers. Of course, we're friends. Yes. But um, just getting their take, especially for Canada and what's happening in Canada right now and the hope that's rising for Canada, that's been really inspiring to me. And, and I'm, I'm very, very hopeful to see what God is going to do, just like he did for our nation. Yeah, come on. Uh, hopeful meaning uh, revival, politically, all the All of it, or, all of yeah. it, yeah. yeah. God's have on have the you move. ever had a heart for Canada or? Um, yeah, we have. We um, connected with Fatine. Oh, yes. She came down to Bethel and actually she gave a Canadian ring to us. Oh, wow. And while we were here at the conference, I felt like the Lord said, I want you to go home and wear that ring. Wow. Because, um, because of what John was sharing about um, what's going to be happening in November here at um, Battlefield or wherever. I can't remember where it's, what it's called. Yes. But, uh -huh. And what the Lord is really showing him about the revival and the next breakthrough for Canada. I, I would just like to hear your heart a little bit on how did you find a balance? Or is there such a thing as balance? Or yeah. you know, family ministry and, uh, you know, of course... Some people have said that ministry is first before family, but you know yeah. we disagree. I disagree. I disagree. Yeah. yeah so I mean, yeah. Uh, I would just love to hear your heart about this. Yeah. Well, um, it is it is a balancing act. We're still trying to figure it out sometimes. Yeah. I mean, we actually sometimes have to schedule with our kids. You know, so uh, Bill's traveling schedule, and then not just being a traveling person, uh, he has a church too. You know, so so it is really busy. I'm pretty independent, so I'm I I have been able to adjust to it. The great thing for Bill and I is we came from beautiful homes. Um, his dad was a minister and my my mom and dad were lay pastors in the wow. church. And so I grew up in the church. So so moving into that, into marriage, was just a normal thing for me. I didn't struggle with wow. the time the time that he was away or the stuff that we had to do in the church. It was just a, something normal for me. Yeah. So that's a real plus. Uh -huh. And I think that has made it easy for us. And as far as raising our three kids, and Eric, Brian, and Leah, we, we just did everything we could to make it natural so they could just be kids. Yeah. You know, and there was no, That's good. you know, we didn't, um, obviously we restricted some things, but we just wanted life to be normal for them. We were very active with sports with them and, and wanted just to, for them to have a normal life and not push anything on them. We let them grow the way they were supposed to grow. And let God deal with them the way He wanted to, and and so now they're all you know they're all on staff with us, mm -hmm. and um, the boys are traveling some, and our son-in-law who who he's the overseer of our second year school there, okay. wow. and our daughter is a worship leader and two is so, so we just work with it. Um, we're we're we live just you know a little bit away from them, so okay. that makes yeah. it really easy and. Uh -huh. And I stay home a little bit more now because of the grandkids and yes. just wanting to hang out with the family. And we have a new grandbaby, so you know it's like we gotta wow. we gotta yeah. hang out. Yeah, uh -huh. and family really is first to us. Yeah. And um, and it actually because Bill travels so much, it makes him feel better when I just get to stay home and mm. hang out with the family. So, yeah. so but I think probably the hardest thing is just the the traveling schedule and how to balance that out. And I think we're still trying to all figure that out, but we're doing the best we can, and yeah. we're following Jesus. So yeah, come on. <laughs> it's all good. Yeah, and you're still here. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, yeah. And I, I mean, to me, it's amazing because the family values that I believe. I mean, even Chris Valentin talks about all the time. Oh, you know, you're a Johnson, or you know, the Johnson family values. Yeah. And you're saying, in a sense, it started with your own parents. Yeah. It didn't just start with you, but yeah. thank God for your healthy parents. Yes, exactly. Uh -huh. yeah. And now it's being transferred. And yeah. I love seeing 
uh, the family values being emanated in the whole Bethel church yeah. culture all around the world. Now it's really impacting the world. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And that's so amazing. I mean, uh, w what do you think are some things that even your parents have taught you and displayed that help to make you the person you are and, and now we see all this? Well, watching my parents just um, serve the church for years and years, and not only did my grandparents, but my grandmother on my father's side, um, she taught Sunday school for 25 wow. years, wow. and and then my grandmother on my uh, mother's side, she, her husband was a pastor, and she was a pastor's wife. So we have a long lineage of that, and then not to, and then Bill's side is just a whole bunch of preachers and missionaries. Wow. Uh -huh. So we, we just grew up in this environment, and um, my parents were just always there at church and always serving. They were some of the last people that left. Wow, come on. And I just grew up watching that, wow. and it was a really important part. As a little kid, you don't think anything about that kind of stuff. It's just your life. But when you get older, you realize the sacrifices that they made for you, and yes. they always, always brought us to God. I remember as a young girl, we, um, Bethel was not always as big as it is now. Um, I my parents came there when I was two. Wow. I was born and raised in, in Reading, okay. and they came there when I was two, and it was a little small church. But I remember as a small girl going down to the altar during, at the end of the services so and watching the people pray and get touched by God. And I, I just grew up in that environment, and that's just, that, that's just gold to me, uh -huh. gold to me. And the same with Bill. You know, he just wow. grew up in that environment. So, so there wasn't there wasn't real brokenness in us, you know, we, we had health and I, I'm, both Bill and I are so thankful for that yeah. because it's really helped us minister wow. um, life to people, so. Wow, that's amazing. I mean, so it seems like you're, you're a preacher's kid, I'm a preacher's kid, we had that same background. I was yeah. born in church. Yeah. And so, I mean, did you ever have a, a moment growing up where, uh, you know, you were complacent or you're, you felt detached or were you always on fire or, when did you have yeah. your first yeah. encounter with the Holy yeah. Spirit? I always grew up loving God. I think when I was maybe a freshman, sophomore, I had a little rough time, uh -huh. but um, that didn't last very long. And because of that, I had a real encounter with God at a Sunday night service once, and it really changed my life. And um, back then, we tarried for the Holy Spirit. Uh -huh, uh -huh. You know, that's what we thought we'd had to do. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And so I had a gal uh, pray with me every Sunday night to receive the baptism of the Come Holy on. Spirit. And Love I was 13, yeah. and um, I went to Christian camp, church camp, and I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit at church camp when I was 13 years old. And wow. I'll never forget it. Never oh. forget that sawdust ground, you know, so and, and it was just old line Pentecostal, oh. you know. Oh. So it, that, was, that was really a turning part, part. But I think when I was 16, coming back, to the Lord, not that I'd never really left Him, but just really coming back at 16, I had a, um, a memory, a really good memory of Him just taking my life, and I became radical after that. Wow. I mean, just really radical. And, and when I graduated from high school, um, Bill and I were already dating, okay. but um, I, I met him when we were 16. Mm -hmm. so. And so I had decided to go to Genesis Bible Training Center in Santa Rosa, California. It was okay. the very first year and I, th I really felt like the Lord wanted me to go, and so I thought, I'm going. If Bill doesn't go, that's okay. I'm still going to go. And four days before school started, he decided to go too, and that's, we got married three months before we graduated, and then our life began. Yeah. And then we actually were uh, ministers in a street home, because okay. that was in 72. Okay. Um, that was the Jesus People Yes, movement. that was the end of the mm -hmm. Jesus People movement, and there was a lot of broken, strung out mm. people. Mm. That were getting saved, and Come on. there was two house. There was two homes in Reading. One was a Christian coffee house, drop-in center, okay. and the other one was put on by this the city. And so they would send all their demon-possessed people to us, Come on, love and it. we yeah. just spent time getting them saved yeah. and delivered. Uh -huh. We had some really incredible experiences. Some not so good, yeah, yeah. but um, really though, we were evangelizing. We were evangelizing on the streets and going to the bars. And, Come on and doing so, all that stuff. And we were, you know, 21 years old, mm -hmm. 18 years old, and, and loved it, just loved God. And we've always, we never had a vision. You know, they have, they, they have you make these vision things of what you want to do. We never had that. Mm -hmm. But our belief was we're just going to follow God. Yeah. Wherever He takes us, yeah. that's what we're going to do. Wow. Yeah. 
And uh, uh, I mean, I'm sure there must have been some difficulties, setbacks. I mean, you know, being newly married with Bill and you know all these strung out hippies coming to Jesus. I mean, like, what were some like defining moments for you, like that kind of really struck you? Just yeah, even more. I have to be honest. It really wasn't a hard time. Okay. Yeah. And we were living in the house. Okay. So we had we were newly married, uh -huh. living in this drop-in center, no time to ourselves, pretty much. Uh -huh. Um, because we were having Bible studies and people would just drop in off the streets and we did well but I think it was just our DNA uh -huh. you know um, I, I I don't know looking back now I think I think a lot of people would have had a problem with that yeah but we didn't and we moved out of that house still were still was involved in the house after we moved mm -hmm. out because I got pregnant okay. and it wasn't a real safe place okay, to yeah. bring a baby into yeah. So that's when we moved out into a little tiny place and then Bill still um, was working in the house and he was also the singles pastor wow. at Bethel. Wow. And that's where he kind of got his start to the ministry. Uh -huh. And he didn't go to college or Bible school to get his, you know, he did home study okay, come on. and got his degree, you know, to be a, a minister. And, wow. and so we did that and, and we really, it, it was good. We loved God and we were doing what he wanted us to do. And, we really didn't have problems. Yeah, wow. Yeah. So I mean, we were, we were broke as all get out, okay, uh -huh. but God always provided for yeah. us. So Come on, wow. Yeah. The simplicity of the gospel. Yeah. And really, when we're yeah. in His will, it's just so joyous. And, yeah. And I love that even for yourself and Bill, I mean, it was a joyful thing. There was no contention. Yeah. It was like, I mean, yeah. I'm sure, you know, uh, have our moments, but I mean, w what is it like as a woman? Um, I'm sure there's a lot of women watching right now and I mean as a woman kind of in ministry I mean yeah I mean did you have any setbacks or any difficulties was you know people against that or anything or? well people have always been against the move of God uh -huh. it doesn't matter who the person is okay yeah you know that's uh -huh. just the way it is so yeah. you just get used to that I mean when we were pastoring a little church up in the mountains for 17 years people knew who we were it's a yeah. little tiny town uh -huh and they would you know we'd walk into a room and they'd be talking about us you know yeah. and, and so you just you, you just have people cursing you and doing all that and sure. and we grew through that uh -huh. we never got bitter we just you know like i said there's always going to be somebody that's going to not like the move of god mm -hmm. and we knew that it was a spirit behind it yeah so that helped too we didn't know that it, we knew that it wasn't really the person there was just an evil spirit behind it. Mm -hmm. So we just blessed. We, we still we still bless our enemies. You know, that's the way God yeah. commanded us to do. So oh. that's, what, that's what we did. And uh, as a pastor's wife, I always prayed, God, you make him the man you want him to be. And I tell women that. I said, don't try to change your husbands. Mm -hmm. You marry him thinking you're going to change him. They won't work good or for anybody. Uh -huh. Yeah. And what you do is you just pray, God, you make them the person that you want them to be. And then we'll all be happy, yeah. you know. Yeah. So that and that's what I did, and that wow. and that worked. It totally wow. worked, yeah. And, and such grace and wisdom on your side. Uh, I mean, to pray that the uh, yeah. Proverbs thirty-one virtuous woman to pray yeah. that. And I mean, one thing I so love even about Bethel Church and the culture. Of course, there's more revolution and all these things that's burst out of it. Yes. But uh, I mean, it's the celebration of even dating and, yeah. and meeting. Yeah. You know. I think that's amazing. It is. Yeah. I think it's wonderful. We really do celebrate that. And we have a school of 26 or so hundred students. Most of them are young. And a lot of them get married by the time they graduate. Yeah, and, it, and then in a couple of years, they start having babies. Yeah. And we just think it's absolutely wonderful. That's amazing. I think it's the way God intended it. Yeah. Because, I, you know, I, I love when I see our students come together as a couple and get married because I believe that it is against what the devil wants, on, first yeah. of all. And I believe that they become a powerful team, revivalists, because these guys are, you know, they're taught revival. Yeah. And they become these strong teams and we just get to send them out. Yeah. You know, we're sending them out to start churches and, and be missionaries. And some of our missionaries are in the most dangerous Come places on. you can possibly be in. And they're bringing the revival and they're bringing Jesus. And it's just, to us, it's like we had we we had dreams, you know, yeah. but we never thought it would be like this wow. and how wonderful it is, yeah, yeah. and that we can we can look now at our spiritual sons and daughters and and our kids too as well, mm -hmm. and just think, my goodness, we just never had an inkling of how good 
wow. God would be and just bless us with all these spiritual children. Wow. I mean, they're just, it's, I mean, you're it's rich. been, you, yeah. You and Bill are rich. We are. Some of the richest people in the we world. We are, really. yeah. we are. I mean, history makers, and, when they think of God's generals, yeah. I mean, literally, you know, your family's name will be there. And that's what I think about legacy. Yeah. yeah this is incredible. Yeah. And I, I mean, you've paid the price again and again and again and again. Yeah. And I think a lot of people can criticize and say negative things or be jealous or envious, but they don't know the private, public yeah. prices that you and yeah. Bill have paid. Yeah. Uh, I mean, how, uh, if you can share a little bit uh, just about paying the price, I mean, even for yourself personally, I yeah. mean, uh, what are some things that you f feel like you've had to lay down for yourself or do, do you ever feel that way or? Um, yeah, I've had a few times where I felt that way, but I knew that it was God and you know, Bill's traveling really increased and, um, there were times where I'm just like, oh man, I just don't want him to travel so much anymore. Yeah. But I knew that when he was asked to go places, it was God. Yeah. And when it's God, you've got to say yes. Yeah. And Come he on. makes up for the rest. I mean, our life is really blessed and we've had many blessings, um, Holy Ghost gifts, you know, and, and I believe it's just because God is honoring what he has called us to do and we've said yes to it. Yeah. So, you know, I miss my husband, you know, when he's gone. I can't mm -hmm. travel with him everywhere. Yeah. I travel, I'm here by myself. Um, so we do that, but uh, we make up for it when we get back together. So it's the way you work it. Yeah. And we've done it for, we've almost been married for 44 years. Come on. So we've, you know, yeah, we've yeah. done it for a long time. Yeah. So it's all, it's all good. Mm -hmm. so. do, do you think uh, it, it's getting easier uh, by the year? Uh, I'm, sh I'm sure you've seen a big progression and transition. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it is, it has gotten easier and we're trying to figure out Even how the Lord, yeah, oh yeah, uh -huh. how the Lord would want us to slow down a little bit, especially for yeah. Bill. Uh -huh. And uh, we're seeing how that could work. So far we've tried, but it just hasn't worked. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's really hard to say no. Yeah. You know, when, when you go places and people are so hungry for God. Yeah, and I tell you, especially, I mean, they're, especially the Asian nations, are just so hungry. The first time I spoke in Hong Kong, mm. I about got pulled off the stage. They, they told me, be careful. Ah, yeah. You know, there's just this hunger all over the world for the things of the Lord. Come on. And it's really hard to say no to that, yeah, you yeah. know? Yeah. So we do what we can. Wow. And, and we just pr try to go where God wants us to go. Bill really feels called to Australia. He's been going to Australia wow. for years. Come on. Really is called to, to um, Asian countries. and. And uh, we just got back from uh, Korea, uh -huh. South Korea. Right. Beautiful trip. Uh -huh. Just praying for that whole dynamic that's going on yeah, there. And yeah. That. And for an intercessor, uh -huh. I get to go to these places and just get Come to hear on. God and pray, you yeah. know. So. Uh, did did yeah. you go to the DMZ line there? No, we didn't go. We were only 37 miles from it. Okay. But I went to this um, high rise building the last day, and the, the windows like these. Um, overlook the city and on the other side of the mountain was North Korea so I just stood in the, the window you know and just said yeah. oh god you know just yeah come on so good yeah it's a real honor to be able to go places and and be able to pray yeah. and I've taken trips all over the world just to go do some prayer somewhere uh -huh. you know um, my mother as well she's an intercessor in fact you remind me a lot of her yeah she's classy she's sound you know well poised elegant and no, she's an intercessor, yeah. and you came out with a book, Happy Intercessor, yeah. of course. Yeah. Uh, I mean, how uh, important do you think it is uh, for women, women of God, to have a strong prayer life? Yeah, well, I think women carry it, to mm -hmm. be honest with you. I think there's a, because of our emotional makeup, uh -huh. I think we have, we can be more sensitive, not that men can't, Correct. but I think we are more sensitive to the spirit realm, yeah. and we see better. We're nurturers by na nature, so yes. we want to see things healed and taken care of. So I think that helps with the intercession. Uh -huh. And um, I personally feel like, though, everybody is to be some type of an intercessor. I realize there's an anointing and others that's more that would put them like in a general position. Mm -hmm. But I always love it when I go to prayer meetings and there's men there. On, because yeah. I, 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 like, I think there needs to be a good balance in yeah. that. But um, the women are, they're the ones that, you know, there's a scripture in the Bible that talks about great is the women yeah, that yeah, carried the out the word. Yes. Yeah. And 
um, I think that we have a real huge place in the body of Christ. It is a joy and an honor to be able to intercede and pray. Just to sit down with the Lord and say, Lord, what are you doing? How do you want me to pray about Amen. this? Mm -hmm. And then get his downloads and, mm. and just pray that. So, Come on. Yeah. Um, I remember I was in Singapore and I was talking with Pastor Young, a good friend of mine. And, uh, you know, of course, I was out of his conference, Kingdom Invasion, uh -huh. where, you know, uh, Lou Engel got the big check for Azusa Now and all that. And I asked him this question. I said, do you think that you're, when you come to a place of so much favor that you can stop having faith? And uh, I mean, Bethel Church, uh, your family is experiencing so much favor right now. I mean, do you ever feel like favor versus faith? Or, you know, is there a fine line? Or, you know, are, are you still contending, living by faith? Or, uh, I mean, hopefully you understand the question. Yes, I yes. Uh -huh. um, I, we do live by faith. We know where our source is from. Yeah. We know it's certainly not us. Yes. I mean, you know, there are times where I wake up in the morning and go, I can't believe that we're even here. And Bill's the same because it just, you know, <laughs> we weren't, neither one of us were good students. I mean, we're just, we're introverts, you know, yeah, just yeah. all that. Both of us would prefer to take F's on our oral exams in high school. Okay. And, and so it's just like us, you know, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. So we know where our strength is from yeah. and that we really lean on him and, and believe that he's going to do it. Yeah. And, um, but we know that there's a favor on us. It's obvious. And we're thankful for that, but that's not something that we even focus on. Yeah. So. Come on. Yeah. yeah. And and uh, I love Bethel Church culture. Anything is impossible, and yeah. really that faith for yeah. the supernatural, releasing revivalists, evangelists all yeah. around the world to do signs, wonders, miracles, to be free. Really. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I remember first time I ever went to Bethel Church BSSM, and I got so rocked. Yeah. I got jacked up. Yeah. And I I mean I've never experienced anything like that. Yeah. That was just three and a half, four years. Yeah. And uh, just so much. You know what I love uh -huh. is that neither Bill and I are micromanagers. Okay. Um, when we came to Bethel, there was a lot of ministries that just died. Mm. And we asked the Holy in Spirit. Bethel Church or yeah. Around? No, in Bethel Church. Okay. You know, like the kids' ministries okay. and all those, they uh -huh. just died. And we just asked the Lord to raise up what He wanted to raise up. And so He That's did. Good. And and what I did is the things that I was in overseeing, I would find somebody that was better at it okay. and say, here, it's Come yours on. now. So I kind of have an administrative gift. Uh -huh. I'm a vision, both Bill and I are visionaries, but we'd like to find people that can carry it out. Yeah. And so I would give, you know, I gave the intercession to one of our gals. It's just doing a beautiful Come job. On. And then the prayer ministry and our sozo ministry and all that. So what we like to do is we like to empower people. Yeah. We don't like to control people. We like to find out what their giftings are. Come on and then give them permission to go for it. Like our artists, you know, be creative, do what you need to do. Come we on. love it, we trust you. Um, obviously there's pastoring that has to take place. Mm -hmm. You know, through the renewal, we had to pastor some things, you wow. know, and help people uh -huh. see that this is not the way you do things. Uh, you need to do it this way. And mostly it went really well. We had a few situations where we had to really say, uh, yeah, this is not gonna work. but. Uh -huh. Um, but most of the time people are just really receptive and it's really exciting to be able to watch somebody that you mentored and raised up, just Come on. go for it. Come on. Just go for it. So. Wow. Um, uh, here's Bethel Church and, you know, it, it's such a, uh, you know, it could be a bubble, but it's, you know, it's bursting everywhere. Yes, yes. And uh, I mean, what other movement streams around the world are, are you you know, are you intrigued by, or, you know, that's not kind of in the, you know, Bethel Circle family, but, you know, you're just so intrigued by, or you've been moved by, yeah. impressed by. One of the things my husband has been so good at is is involving himself with other streams. Uh -huh. We call it other yeah. other streams. That they, they believe similar to us, but they don't, they have different giftings. Yes. And we think that's great. I mean, not everybody has to be us. Yeah. We wouldn't expect that. Um, you know, we're involved with Benny Hinn. We're, you know, we're involved and with the I faith. I love seeing that. Yeah. I think so many people I did. think it's great. Yeah. And he purposely, when we came to Bethel, he purposely brought different streams into mm -hmm. the church to rock people's world, to be oh, honest with you. Yeah. And they had great anointing, these people. Um, but we found 
that not just Bethel, but other places are become um, ingrown. Mm -hmm. And when you put them in a different environment, they kind of freak out a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. But it's really good for them to stretch and see that God moves in different ways. Yeah. And so Bill has been really, really good at that. So we enjoy um, being involved or looking out at other, other streams. And uh, the Seeker Sensitive Movement. Mm -hmm. I mean, Bethel Music has, are really good friends mm -hmm. with, um, with some of them. And, and we love that. We, we think they're great. Joel Olstein, we absolutely love Joel Likewise. Olstein. Mm -hmm. And he, the guy has got the most positive gift. People say, you know, he doesn't preach the gospel. I'm like, uh, I don't know what that is <laughs> if it's not preaching mm -hmm. the gospel. He just brings another flavor to yeah. the body of Christ. Yeah. And I think that's what God wants us to do. He doesn't want us all to fit in a box. Uh -huh. He loves all the flavors. And we do too. We yeah. love watching that. We love being involved with everybody. Uh -huh. So, uh, what, what is something that's like personally really exciting for you? Like, you know, in the kingdom wise, you know, personally, like what is, what is exciting to you? Like, you know, what teaching ministry, what book are you reading? Uh, personally, I, I just kind of want to get into your yeah. thought mind. Well, to be honest with you, I am uh, really, I really like the political realm. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. And I, ha I watch myself very closely. I watch my spirit very closely so I don't enter into a political spirit mm -hmm. type thing. And that's really, I, I, know, I know in my life where my boundaries are. Yeah. And I know when I cross over. Okay. So I'm really sensitive to that. But I, you know, I had somebody tell me once that the church shouldn't be involved in politics. And I thought, who else? should yeah. be involved, yeah. if not the church. So I'm not saying that I'm going to run for anything, but I'm very, I'm a, I'm a real advocate for cons conservatism. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm, I'm pro-life. You know, all the conservative stuff we're yeah. for. And I'm very much an advocate of that. Mm -hmm. And I will, especially on my social media, mm -hmm. I will give my opinions. Yes. And not everybody likes it. Not everybody thinks that I should be saying anything. But I'm a leader, and I, I, I've, I believe that if we're leaders, we should be teaching people things. Correct. Now, if they disagree with me, that's fine. I can handle that as long as they're not horrible. Yeah. Um, I, I don't mind disagreeing with people. I have a, my best friend is of different persuasion. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like we, we get along. We love each other. We mm -hmm. know how to draw our lines. That's amazing. And it is amazing. But I, I want to try to help in that arena to help people understand mm -hmm. we could still love and still have our differences and we have to learn how to do that yeah. one of the things that has disappointed me the most in this last election thing is that the body of Christ has become so divided yeah. where we didn't need to do that mm -hmm. we really we can disagree but we don't need to be hateful yeah. and so I'm really praying that the Lord heals that mm -hmm. that we we become more mature in that um, uh, right now my passion is for California um, California yeah. needs help, mm -hmm. and so uh, I believe that God is moving in California in an awesome way, and I want to see California taken back and put, there were so many moves of God, I yes. mean, you know, mm -hmm. so many moves of God in California, and we need to tap into that and pull from those wells again yeah. and call California back into her destiny. So that's, that's kind of a passion in my heart right now. That's amazing. So I'm really praying into that and doing what the Lord would want me to do. Do you think it, it kind of sparked up or came about with the election, or do you think it came, or it was just always something there? Uh, you mean for California? Yes, California, yeah. the political realm and yeah, all this. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've always been involved in politics, not really in depth. Uh -huh. um, I found out that my grandparents were really involved in politics. Okay, yeah. they, they really liked the whole thing, so it's kind of in my genes uh -huh. to be lean. And my daughter is picking up that same thing, and my son is too. And so it's always been there, but I think this election over any other election, Correct. I have learned more mm. about the political process and the hurdles that we need to get through. Yeah. And watching God put a man in office that he puts on like a glove. Come on. It's not like anybody else's glove. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't agree with everything that he says, but I, that, to me that's, that doesn't matter because God has put him in the office to shake things up and to bring uh, America back to where she's supposed to be. And, and then since the election, I've watched California just go downhill mm -hmm. because there's a governor in the position that 
hates our new president and mm -hmm. will do anything to t sabotage him. Yeah. So he's sabotaging our state. And I think it's going to backfire. Yeah. Because when you mess with what God is doing, it backfires. Ooh, come on. Hallelujah. Yeah. And we're see, we see that happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, things will happen and it just backfires on them. Yeah. So, so, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I don't know where it's going to go, but I'm going to see um, where I need to be at the right time. So. Yeah. Wow. Amen. And uh, um, I mean, one thing I so admired two years ago, Revival Alliance. <laughs> You shared about being healthy and all that, yeah. and, and that did something to me. Yeah. That literally sparked me again on a route of health, not yeah. just exercise, but what I eat and being conscientious, yeah. grounding. What the heck is grounding? You know, I, I, <laughs> I, know. You know, I learned a lot of things, and yeah. I believe that was, I believe even Cheon said it, it was the most impactful of that you know, Revival Alliance, and that's wow. what it took wow. back away. Yeah. So thank you for that. Well, you know, um, your body, your soul, and your spirit are all triune. They're together. Yes. They're linked together. So going after all of that kind of health, I think, is important. When I started teaching on the physical part of health, it was a little bit hard for the church to receive it because why is somebody in the yeah. pulpit teaching on this? Because it was, you know, growing up, you're told you can't do this, you can't do this, you can't do this, and about the only thing you can do is eat, mm. Mm. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. And so I saw the body of Christ so unhealthy. Sure. We travel all over the world, pray for people, and people are so unhealthy in the mm. church. I'm like, there's something wrong with this. We should be the happiest and the healthiest people on the Come planet. On. Yeah. So um, a lot of my peer friends were getting really sick and with schedule, stress. But the physical part is important, but the soul and the spirit yeah. is really important too. And having uh, when, we're, when our soul, when our mind is healthy when we're thinking good thoughts about ourselves, about people, when we're not, um, sometimes we're our own worst critic, we're critical of ourselves. Yes. I've talked to many girls, especially they hate their bodies, they mm -hmm. hate themselves. Yeah. That has to switch. And when the mind switches, then everything else starts lining up. And our spirit man should be stronger than our mind. Mm -hmm. And so like the session I was just in, at the end of the session, I had people lay on the floor and we turned worship music on. on. We didn't pray. Yeah. We didn't journal. We didn't read the Bible. We just were there with God. And we listened to the music and it brought us into his presence. And that's what makes us strong in the spirit realm. And that has to be really strong because we have to be able to hear how he feels about us, how he feels about the world, you know, just things like that. So all those three things go together to make up a happy, healthy mm -hmm. person. Um, how, how do you, Benny Johnson, how do you handle all this? There's the public fame, notoriety, even the criticism. Uh, there's, you know, being a pastor's wife, you know, being a mother, a grandmother, all this. How, how do you handle all this at the tip of it, every day? Um, I remember once coming out of church one night and I just was, I don't know, I don't remember what was going on, but it was really not good, I don't remember. And I got ready to get into my car to go home and I looked up at the sky and I yelled, we are not stopping. Oof. We are not stopping. And you have to have that attitude yeah. no matter what happens, the good, bad, and the ugly. You have to have a conviction.